This is Mr. Priscilla with his college algebra class. And today we're going to be discussing ellipses and hyperbolas. And this picks up right after having graphed circles the last time. I know it's been a while. It's been 12 days since we did that circle discussion. But I'm betting most of y'all still remember what a circle looks like, okay? So an ellipse is sort of a flattened circle. An ellipse is a flattened circle. It might be more horizontal or it might be more vertical. Most people have an idea. They've heard the phrase ellipse or elliptical before. So most people have an idea of what an ellipse looks like. A hyperbola, however, not all people know what that looks like. A hyperbola looks sort of like two U-shaped figures facing away from each other be opening up and down or they might be opening left and right. Mm -hmm. Take a little trigonometry and discuss rotation of axes then at that point you'll see these figures opening maybe at an angle but for right for our purposes they're opening either left and right or up and down. Now let's look at an ellipse first. Just like a circle has a center, these figures are going to have centers also. On an ellipse, to graph it, you're going to plot the center, and then unlike a circle where you just put the, using a compass, you put the sharp point at the center, move over and spin it around, here we're going to move left and right a certain number of units and then up and down a certain number of units. That's how we're going to graph an ellipse. You can't really use a compass for graphing ellipses because the left-right movement and the up-down movement are different. The equation for an ellipse do y'all remember sort of a, something about the equation of a circle? The equation of a circle, it was like this. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. If you haven't worked on the circle homework, work on it and this ellipses and hyperbolas, this you know, circle homework isn't due until I'm thinking it's Monday of next week. Okay? Do you remember how you found the center for any circle? Something with the number inside the parentheses there. You would say change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the X. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the Y. And then whatever this number is, take the square root of it to get the radius. That's how we found centers for circles. Well, the equation of an ellipse is going to look sort of like this. It's going to have the parentheses and the squares. Here it is. X minus H squared over A squared plus Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. So it looks sort of like the equation of a circle, except you have the fractions on the left and the number 1 on the right. Instead of looking like this, the x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. In order to graph these ellipses, you're going to state the center, and you're going to find the center the same way you did for finding them with circles. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the X, then change the sign of the number in the parentheses with Y. Okay, so to find the center, change sign, change the sign of the number in parentheses with X, then repeat for y. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with y. Hmm. So that'll get you the center. And then 
we're going to be moving left and right, up and down. To get that left-right movement, we'll move left and right from the center, the square root of the number under x. And then move up and down the square root of the number under y. Now, I'll come over here and write the uh, equation, the standard form for a hyperbola, those equations, in a moment. Right now, I want to graph an ellipse. And there's no gr fancy ellipse or hyperbola graphing tool. These are all going to be multiple choice. So I'm taking the liberty of covering up these multiple choices as we do this. Okay. So here's the one we're going to graph. It says graph this ellipse. x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. Now when you're doing these uh, in the homework, you can blow up the graphs. The little magnifying glass will be there. When I have these things printed, you're going to see that these graphs are sort of small, like right here. I see how small those graphs look, but when you're actually doing it as homework, you can just blow them up to get a bigger picture of them, okay? But the things that print out on paper, they're not really large, okay? So, we're told graph the ellipse. In order to graph it, we've got to know that center. Well, notice there's no parentheses up here with the x square and the y square. So just like with circles, y'all remember what we decide the center is? If there's no parentheses up there, like x minus zero. zero. Yeah, the center is zero, zero. If there's no parentheses up here, we'll assume that center is zero, zero. Then you'll move left and right the square root of the number under x, so left and right 4, then move up and down the square root of the number under y, up and down 3, so I'm going to graph that circle, oh excuse me, that ellipse, we don't need to, but I think I'll start a new sheet of paper, I'm going to graph it just right here. I'll draw my rectangular coordinate system. That's the x-axis and y-axis. And again, when you're doing these as homework, it's multiple choice. So you might just, okay, look and see which graph looks like it was centered at 0, 0, and then move left and right, 4, up and down, 3. Is this graph going to be more vertical or more horizontal? What do you all think? Yeah, because the horizontal is the bigger number. So it's centered at 0, 0. Move left and right four units. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's from the y-axis. Uh, uh, excuse me, from the center. Start at the center, 0, 0. Move left and right four. Then start at the center. Move up and down three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then connect the dots. Something like this one. Sort of like a lemon or a lime. And now we're going to look and see which graph it is. But again, because the way that it prints out, it sure does print out small. Okay? So it's going to sort of be hard to, you know, might be hard to look and tell. Let me do this. So which one looks like it was centered at 0, 0, and then move left and right 4, up and down 3, 
Do I need to zoom in more on this one? Let me see. Is it D? C and D look a lot alike. But, uh, oh, here. Yeah. C and D look a lot alike, but notice the scale on it. The scale on C is going from negative 20 to 20, which would put each one of these, let's see, is it one, two, three, four, five, so each little mark is four on this one, on C, whereas here it's going negative 10 to 10, so each mark is two, so two, Four. It is moving left and right. Four. And the way I zoomed up there on the board, you know, does it look like it was up and down three? Okay. Now, if you're thinking, wow, I can't see that. That's hard to tell. Well, when you actually are doing the homework, there'll be the little magnifying glass out beside each graph, and you can blow it up and see it a lot clearer. But that's the downside to printing these out like this. It is sort of hard to see. Okay. So D on that one. Now that one was centered at the origin, zero, zero. There were no parentheses up on the numerator. So let's do one where there's some parentheses. Mm -hmm. I'll do this one next. It's problem number six number six in your homework and it's going to ask you for some it's going to ask some questions here which I'll discuss what those mean in a moment okay but the first thing it wants you to do plot the graph of the following ellipse and then it wants you to state the domain range and center well, I don't know why it's asking you to find the center last when really that's the first thing you've got to do is find that center I'll go ahead and define what it means by the domain. The dom word domain refers to the x values. And the word range refers to the y values. Before you can answer those, you've got to get the graph drawn. That's why it says plot the graph. So we're going to graph this ellipse first. And in order to graph the ellipse, We've got to know that center, then left, right, up, down. Okay, so what's the center going to be? I'll just write it right here. What's the center? Well, this is one where there's some parentheses up on the top, right? So center isn't going to just be zero, zero. The center is going to be what? Remember how you do it. You change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the X, then repeat that for the Y. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the Y. So the center is a negative 5, comma what? Negative 1. Then we're going to move left and right. The square root of the number under x and up and down the square root of the number under y. So left and right is it 5. Up and down what? Mm, 2. And there's all those little bitty graphs. Do we expect this graph to be more horizontal, like A and B, or more vertical, like C and D? And how do I know? Horizontal. horizontal, because that left right number is bigger. So if you're going to guess, you guess C or D, you don't guess A or B. But we're not going to guess. We're going to draw this little graph, and I'll just draw it right. I'm going to draw it right, oh, let's see, I wonder if I have room to put it right here, okay. Draw my rectangular coordinate system.
Okay, so. And so mark is one unit. So I'm plotting the center, left five down one. Well, let's see, I'm gonna use uh, black for that. Left five, one, two, three, four, five, down one. So left five down one is the center. Then from the center, starting at the center, move left and right five, up and down two, from the center. So left and right five, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Up and down two. One, two. One, two. Now connect it. Now when you are doing this in my math lab, it'll make you do the graph first before it asks you these questions. So, once we've done that, oh now, any questions on how I drew the graph? Oh wow, I've drawn better ellipses in my day, but let's see. Hmm. Oh, I was going to ask, do I need to zoom it in, or can y'all tell which one it is? I, I'm thinking it's going to be C, isn't it? Because the graph should, look at how it should be touching that, going above the x-axis, touching the y-axis. It doesn't really cross the y-axis like D is. So it's going to be C. So we've chosen that answer. C. Then we begin some nice little graphical analysis. It starts asking you a couple of questions. And you begin to see why I'm using this graph here. Why I drew it out like that so neatly. It asks, what is the domain? By that it means, what are all the x values? All of the x values on this graph are between what two numbers? Well, I'm thinking, if you look at this one here, where it's bigger, all the x values are between negative 10 and 0. And that's the first time this semester we've actually found a domain. Okay, the domain is the x value. All the x values are between negative 10 and 0. So it's sort of hard to tell that looking at this little bitty thing here. But again, when you're doing it with the homework, you can blow up the graph to tell better. And now what about the y values? That's what the range is. Looking at this, all the y values are between, let's see, there's a positive one, and what's this one here? Negative three. So in interval notation, the smaller number is always the one that's written first. Notice it's written negative three comma one, not one comma negative three. So the y values are all between <coughs> negative 3 and 1 and then it's just so bizarre as an afterthought they decided let's put another problem on find the center and the center is sort of the first thing you had to do okay so they're asking for you to type the center I guess it's just for you to practice doing that ordered pair again what do y'all think the common mistake would be putting something like that Without the parentheses, if you don't put the parentheses around it, it's going to count it wrong every time. Okay. So we've graphed an ellipse centered at zero, zero, and we've graphed an ellipse centered at something other than zero, zero. Hmm. Oh, okay. Well. What the heck is a hyperbola, and why is it being lumped in with these uh, ellipses? Well, oh, let me find something. Here's that sheet of paper I mentioned earlier under document sharing. I have this for y'all. 
my little discussion of an ellipse without actually drawing an ellipse or anything. I just sort of talk you through how to draw an ellipse. And what does it look like? Well, a flattened circle. And then unlike what I did just a while ago, where I wrote the equation, I just wrote the, the general form with the parentheses. Here I actually state, okay, if there's no parentheses, if it's centered at zero, zero, then the equation looks like x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. Like number one, there were no parentheses. So you move left and right, square root of the number under x, up and down, square root of the number under y. And I'll, I'll give you a little terminology on here that uh, I hadn't mentioned. I'm not sure if my math lab actually uses it. These four points are called the vertices. And, oh, the long line segment is called the major axis. The short line segment, the minor axis. Again, I don't think you see that with my math in any of the homework. We just, I was just typing this up. Everything I wanted on here about ellipses. And then I go through and say it again with parentheses. If there's parentheses, to find the center, change the sign of the number in the parentheses with x, then change the sign of the number in the parentheses with y. Now, what about these hyperbolas? Where's my? Why are they being left here with this stuff? Well, a hyperbola's equation looks very much like an ellipse. The equation of a hyperbola looks like the equation of an ellipse. By that I mean there's going to be fractions on the left and a 1 on the right. The middle sign, instead of it being a plus, is going to be a minus. In general, hyperbolas are open the way the first variable, let me just go ahead and write this equation. I'm writing the equation for the horizontal one first. The equation for the horizontal hyperbola is going to look just like this, the equation for a vertical, excuse me, for an ellipse, except the middle sign is a minus. So here's the equation. X minus H squared over A squared minus Y minus K squared over B squared equals 1. So the equation for a hyperbola looks a whole lot like the equation of the ellipse. The equation of the horizontal hyperbola that has the x occurring first. The equation of a vertical hyperbola is going to have this term, the y minus k square over b square first. y minus k square over b square minus x minus h squared over a square equals 1. In general, hyperbola is open in the direction of the first variable. If the first variable is y, it's opening like the y axis up and down. If the first variable is x, it's opening like the x-axis left and right. Okay? Let me write that. Hyperbolas open in the direction of the first variable. first variable's x, it opens left, right. If the first variable's y, it's opening up and down. To graph these, you're going to start off finding the center and then those same four points, the left, right, up, down, four points. And then what you're going to do after that, well, I'll illustrate that in a moment. Here's the one we're going to do now. Okay. These in particular, the graphs look sort of messy when you print it out on paper because they're printed so small. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to graph this one. This is, I'll write down the equation right here. This is the one we're doing. It's everyone's number eight in the homework will look like this. Right? Here it is. It's y minus 3 squared over 16 minus x plus 2 squared over 25 equals 1. Now, this is number 8. Ooh, I'm going to do it right there. Number 8. And it tells you graph the hyperbola. So it's telling you it's a hyperbola. And if it didn't say hyperbola, how would you know it's a hyperbola? Well, I'm only that minus sign in the middle. Okay? So, when graphing a hyperbola, the first thing I always do is decide how is it opening? Up and down or left and right? Well, hyperbola is open in the direction of the first variable. The first variable here is a y, so this thing's going to be opening up and down. So it's going to have two U shapes. Now, we'll find the center. Here's where a lot of people mess up. Finding this center. Is the center 3 comma negative 2 or is it negative 2 comma 3? Negative 2 comma 3. Make sure. I didn't say change the sign of the first number or change the sign of the second number. The way I can. Okay. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with X. Make sure you're doing the x first. So the center here is negative 2, 3. Then we're going to move left and right. I didn't say left and right first denominator, did I? What did I say? Left and right, square root of the number under x, up and down, square root of the number under y. I didn't talk about first denominator and second <coughs> denominator. So left and right, am I going to be moving four units or five units? Five. Make sure left and right is the square root of the number under x. So five. Up and down is the square root of the number under y. Mm -hmm. Four. Let me see. I used to joke that this orange is the invisible color. Is it invisible? No? Oh, okay. Well, the square root of 16. So we move up and down 4. Now... I'm going to draw a rectangular coordinate system. That's the x-axis and the y-axis. And then I'll show you and plot the center. And then I'll start going through and show you how we're going to get that graph drawn. It's going to be sort of strange. If you look at the answer choices, you're going to have... Mm, it's going to involve drawing a big x. Okay, do y'all see that? Everything has an X. Every graph has a big X going through it. So I'll show y'all how to draw that X in a moment. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. Uh, excuse me. X axis and Y axis. I'm going to plot the center. Left 2, up 3. Left 2, up 3. So left 2, up 3. There's the center. Then from the center, we move up and down 5. And then from the center, left and right 4. So up and down 5 from the center. Ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, I should have drawn it. Let me 
we draw my y-axis higher there. So I went up five. So I'll be right here at eight. And then down five. One, two, three, four, five. So it'd be right there at negative two. So I'm moving up and down. Excuse me. Oh wow, that always happens when I'm filming, recording this. Why did I go up and down five? I'm not supposed to go up and down five. I'm supposed to go how? Left and right five. Okay, left and right five, up and down four. So left and right five. One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to put us there at three. One, two, three, four, five. Where's that going to put us? Uh, is that negative six? No, negative seven. One, two, three, four, negative seven. I'm moving left and right, five. Up and down, four. So. That's a mark out, in case you can't tell. I'm moving up and down four. One, two, three, four. So that's going to be a seven, isn't it? One, two, three, four. So that's a negative one. So now you're going to have to ignore. I know it might be hard to. You're going to have to ignore these things here. Okay. We should have time to do another one of these, and maybe I'll get it right then. So I move left, plot of the center, left two up three. Move left and right five, up and down four. Now, at this point, you know how the graph is opening. It's opening up and down. So, two of these four points are going to be those turning points here. Because it's opening up and down, it's going to be using this orange point here and here. Okay, if you can imagine drawing a little U-shaped figure here, and then down here, a U-shaped figure. If it had been opening left and right, it'd be here. And here, just knowing that is usually enough to get the whole graph drawn, or to choose the A, B, C, D. However, if we want to get the width right, you're going to take these four points. So what I'm doing now, we're going to draw this big X, and uh, that'll help us get the width of the thing right. As we know, it's opening up and down. So it's the question, the question is, is it a real skinny U shape? Or is it real wide? To get that width right, you're going to draw a rectangle. I'll draw dotted. Draw a dotted rectangle through all four of those points. Draw a dotted rectangle. Then, to get the big dotted X, you're going to draw, or the big X, I'm going to draw it dotted. You draw the diagonals that pass through the corners and the center, like this. When you're doing this with my math lab, sometimes it'll show the rectangle, sometimes it won't, depending on who wrote the problem. Sometimes it'll show the X, sometimes it won't. Sometimes the X will be dotted, sometimes it'll be solid. But the purpose of this dotted X, your graph is going to start here and then run out beside that big black X like that and this. The X lets you get the width of the thing right. You see, I was going to draw it much narrower. I was thinking something like this. But now it starts here and then just runs out beside it. Maybe I need a better color. 
runs beside the dotted X. Usually you can choose A, B, C, D without showing the dotted X. Oh. Now if you draw it with the big dotted X, that X is uh, intersecting at the center of this thing. So, when we look at the multiple choice, and again, these are really small because of how I printed them out. They should be centered at negative 2, 3, opening up and down. Well, y'all see, maybe, let me try, I'm going to blow up the screen so that y'all are watching. It doesn't blow it up on the video, however. Which one of these looks like it's centered at negative 2, 3? Well... Here, the, here are some of the choices. It's not, it's certainly not A, because A, it's opening left and right. Is there another left, right one? Nuh uh. So, which one looks like it was centered at left two up three? Um, hmm. Is it B? And again, it's sort of hard to tell, right? Because, uh, it prints it out so small, but when you're doing this on my math lab, there'll be a little magnifying glass and you can blow up each one of these so you can see it better. Okay? But if it shows the X, the X intersects there at the center. So this one, the center, can y'all tell that's not a negative 2, 3 here? That's not left 2, up 3. And neither is this one. Okay? Any questions there? Let me find another one of these. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So you said if, if, like, in the equation y is first, then it's gonna look like, uh, then it's gonna look like b. Yeah, it's opening up and down. Okay. And okay. Then x is first. It's gonna go. Yes, left to right. Okay. okay, it's that first variable that decides decides how it's opening for our uh, purpose, up and down or left and right. Mm -hmm. Now let me see. Where's another one of these? Mm -hmm. Let's try this one. Number seven. How is this one going to be opening? Left and right or up and down? Okay, the first variable is X. So it's opening left and right. So it's going to look like this and that. So, so we're going to you know, guess which two would you not guess at? Can you tell uh, B and C? Yeah, B and C are opening up and down. So it's not those. So let's write out the center. Make sure you're going x, y. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with x. Then change the sign of the number in the parentheses with y. Oh, wow. Do y'all see why I sort of cover up the answer choices when I'm doing these? Where did I get the five? Oh, I've got to change the sign of the number in the parentheses with the X. Change the sign of the number in the parentheses with Y. What should I have instead of that five? Positive. Yeah, positive two. Now, with that, oh wow, do y'all see why I cover up the answer choices? Did someone yell out the answer choice to me? It's A. It's showing the X, and so, this one looks like it's centered at negative 2, 2, not this one. This one looks like it's drawn centered at the origin. But let me go ahead and do the whole graph. Since I have this graph paper that I'm going to just throw away, where I'm graphed if I don't use it, I'll move left and right the square root of the number under x. That's where I got that uh, 5. Up and down. The square root of the number under y, 7. So to graph it, ooh. 
Yes. Okay. That's a sensible question to ask. And you know, so often, very rarely is it ever asked. Okay. Jamila, that's a good question. I'm always amazed that no one ever asked that. Okay, so, oh, can y'all see this? I'm plotting the center, negative two, two, so left two, up two. Now, I don't want y'all to help me anymore. Let's see if I do it right or not. Move left and right five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Up and down seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you want to get that width exactly right, you draw the rectangle, then draw the big dotted X, but for most of these multiple choice problems and for my math lab and the ones you see on your test, just knowing these four points is probably good enough. Which of these two points is actually going to be on the graph? Okay, if it's opening left and right, is it going to be these points, the vertical or the horizontal? The horizontal. Its graph is going to look something like this. Something like that. Well, is my uh, width correct? Well, no. Okay. No, it isn't. But the graph looks something like that. And again, if you want to draw the rectangle, oops, you want to draw the rectangle and the big X, okay. But that's just good enough for what we're doing. And it is a, there's another one here. So the good questions to ask would be, will that bottom number always be a perfect square? If it is, then oh wow, you're going to have a, maybe a decimal number, move left and right, up and down. And the, the next question, natural question to ask, that no one ever really asks, but I'm going to pretend y'all do, is, what happens if the number on the right isn't a one? What if that number on the right isn't a number, isn't a one? Well, like number five. Here's what number five looks like. 121 y squared minus x squared equals 121. Well, first of all, we need a number 1 on the right, and what's missing on the left? Maybe some fractions? Should there be some fractions on the left? So what can we, huh? Put a 1 on there. Yeah, you can put a 1, and that'll get the fractions, but it's not going to get the 1 over here. What could I do straight through that'll get a 1 here in fractions all the way through? Yeah. So everyone's number 5 in your homework, you're going to have to, there'll be some number over here, and you divide straight through, and that'll get you the <coughs> equation written with the fractions on the left and the number on the right, and the one, number 1 on the right. Like here, there's 121 over 121 cancels. I'm just going to write it as y squared over 1 minus x squared over 121 equals a 1. So... Mm, Oh, wow. When you look at these, it's sort of hard to tell the way it's uh, split up or the way it's uh, printed so small. Let's see. Oh, 
But again, when you're doing them, you can blow them up. I just can't blow it up here doing, but printing it out on paper like that. But let's decide, how does this thing open? Is it opening up and down or left and right? It's opening up and down because the first variable is y. So you're going to guess, you wouldn't guess, it might be hard to tell, it's not uh, see, oh, wait. up and down, um, the graph is opening up and down, B, it's hard to tell isn't it, uh, but it's actually, it's opening left and right on B, A is opening up and down, B is opening left and right, C is opening left and right, D is opening up and down. But it's just a very, very flat, that's the thing that's opening, that's happening on B. It's a very flat, it's very wide. But let me go ahead and sketch a graph real quickly. The urge, the, mm, let me see, I wonder, oh gosh, uh, the center is zero, zero. We're going to move left and right, center zero, zero, left and right, the square root of the number under x, so the square root of 121 is 11, is that what I heard? And then up and down, the square root of the number under y, up and down 1, so the center is zero, zero. Move left and right, 11. You know what, I'm just going to, I'm sort of out of room. I'm going to say that this is three little marks is 11. I don't have room over here to draw 11 to the left <coughs> and 11 to the right. Oh my gosh, why didn't y'all tell me? Did I zoom that up for y'all too much? And then up and down one. So... There or here. Which of these four dots, the two, the 11s or the 1s, are going to be the vertices for this? And that vert, the vertices are the little corner, or the turning points there. The 1, the negative 1. So the question is, well, how wide is this graph going to be? Well, See, if you make that square, it's going to turn out to be really flat, real wide. But if you don't make the square, okay, you can still sort of muddle your way through and figure out which of these it is, provided you can see it, okay? The way the little turning points are at the ones opening up and down. That is A is opening up and down. Does it look like that turning point is at 1 and negative 1? No. B, it might be hard to tell, but B is doing really something like this. Okay? Just like C is opening left and right. D, well, does that, is it opening up and down and does it look like maybe it, the turning points are at 1 and negative 1? Well, yeah, it's the closest thing to it. You see, my graph here, well, it's too skinny. If we drew the rectangle and the X, oh. If we drew the rectangle and the X, you see, it's going to be a really wide, flat, hyperbola. Okay. Oh, I should have re probably, probably I should have regenerated this one to get a smaller number here. If the, the 121s had been things like 36 or 25, it wouldn't have been so flat there, okay? But uh, that's it for ellipses and hyperbola. So uh, work on this stuff. And if you haven't done the circles yet, then work on that too. 
we're going to, I think, define functions the next time, okay? So, y'all stay warm, and I'll see y'all on Thursday.